everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can paint this little desert landscape and it's going to be a little bit more of an in-depth video on how to create this painting so let me know in the comments if you enjoy this style of video and if you would like to see more videos like this. If you have a go at painting this make sure you tag me on Instagram because I'd absolutely love to see your work. For my painting today I'm using the Windsor and Newton cold press watercolour paper which is 300 gsm. I bought this quite a while ago from the range but I will link it in the description box below if you're interested. So I've actually taped down my paper so that it's completely flat for my work and I'm just sketching out a little landscape. I'm working on a desert landscape so I've put in the horizon line and then in the very very back I've got sort of a little mountain range and then I'm going to add in some cacti towards the front to give it a little bit of interest and I'm just doing this with a regular pencil and just blocking all of the shapes in really really lightly so that when I come to paint I know where all of my basic shapes are. So I'm going to get started with the sky and I'm just adding a very light layer of water across the sky. There are no pools of water here so you just really want a nice light layer. This will allow the paints to move across really really freely and you can get a nice wet and wet technique going for the clouds. I want it to be a really vibrant sky with the sunset and I think this technique works really well for this. I'm using my Paul Rubens watercolours for my painting today and I'm starting out with the purple that's in the set and I've just added in a really loose amount of paint here so you can see some areas are darker than others which works well for when you're trying to achieve the same look as a realistic cloud which would pick up on a lot of dark and light tones. I then added in some magenta along the edges of my clouds because I want to make this a really intense sunset which is coming through those clouds and I thought this would be a really good way. And once I've added in that magenta, I then try and blend that down a little bit into my purple. I haven't added any additional magenta into my paintbrush. I'm just pulling down any of the water that might be retained in that paintbrush and sweeping over the purple. I then start to think about some warmer tones in my painting and I layer those on top of the purple where it has already dried but then with that magenta I do start to try and bleed that into my yellow so it looks a little bit more realistic and subtle. Across the top half of the sky I'm adding in an orangey yellow and again it's not entirely flat there are some differences between some of the tones it's lighter in some areas and darker in others just to add a more realistic effect and whilst that's still wet you can use the wet and wet technique and I'm going in with my orange so you can add some interest in those clouds thinking about where the darker tones would be and where the lighter tones would be and you can have some fun with this just aside on the the skyscape that you want to create and add in as many different dark tones as you like. Once you've added in your really intense warm tones you're going to add in some darker tones and I'm adding mine in with a really dark purple that I've mixed with a Payne's grey. And because this painting is supposed to be at dusk, just before that sunset is about to fall completely, I'm adding in some of the darker tones towards the bottom of the sky here, nearer to those mountains. And you can use the wet and wet technique here between those dark purples and some of the magenta to really show off those different tones that would be seen within a sunset. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. It would be absolutely amazing amazing to have you join me on this journey. I'm almost at 2,000 subscribers so let me know in the comments what you'd like to see for my celebration video. For this next section of the sky you're going to wait until it's completely dry because you're going to add in some darker tones and again some more intense magentas here and I think that it works a lot better if you allow the background to dry fully so you don't get the wet and wet this time we want to have a layering effect and we're just going to again 
build up those tones in here to make it look like we've got a really intense sunset. It's quite a abstract sky, but I think this works really well for this style of painting. Once we're happy with the sky, we're going to start working on the foreground. I've added in a very light orange yellow so that it kind of reflects a little bit of the same tones as the sky. For the middle ground I'm adding in a burnt sienna and I'm also going to add in some green because I don't want this area to be as bright and as vibrant as the foreground. I'm adding the mountains in with a Payne's Grey and in some areas I want it to look like there's quite a bit of distance so I'm going to layer over the top of them and make it look as though there are a couple of mountains one in front of the other just by adding another layer of that Payne's Grey. Once your foreground is completely dry you can then start building up some darker tones on top and I've done this just lightly patting it in. And then you can also add in a light green layer to that middle ground as well. Now comes the fun part, you can start adding details to the cacti. Now I've gone for a smaller cacti at the front here and then a larger cacti just behind it. Now I think this adds quite a lot of interest to the painting and is our main focal point for this little landscape. If you haven't already started following me on Instagram then make sure you do. I like to sometimes post some behind the scenes but I'd also really love to see your work. So if you have a go at painting this and make sure you tag me on Instagram so I can see how you got on. I want to add a little bit of texture to the background so what we're going to do is use a stippling technique. I'm just dotting in the paint and this will help define different tones and we will get some lighter tones and darker tones quite easily with this technique. Now that those smaller cacti at the front are a lot drier I'm adding in another layer of paint and this time I'm going in with quite a cool toned green because I want this one to have sort of a sagey colour to it. And as you'll notice, I'm not covering the entire space with my paint. I'm leaving some of that original color showing through underneath. And I quite like this painterly effect where you can see quite defined layers of your watercolors. Okay, now we want to really add some warmth to the foreground and I'm just pushing in some of my yellowy orange and adding that warmth to the ground because we want to think about the sunset and that casting on some tall grasses along that desert. And whilst that's drying you can add another layer to your cactus because you haven't painted all the way up to that cactus you should be fine and you shouldn't experience any bleeding across those two colours. You can then start adding in the burnt sienna towards the middle ground so that you can start building up this area and start to define it. Once you've done that, you can then think about adding in some additional details in the foreground and also again building up that warmth and this time using a more vibrant orange, ensuring that your cactus is dry and painting all the way up to that. By this point the area within the middle ground should be dry again and you should be able to then add additional layers and again I'm using a stippling technique because I do like the texture that this provides. When you're creating a painting like this it is really important to allow your layers to dry fully for when you're adding in details. For example, these little lines that I just added, if my paint underneath was still wet, they would then bleed out into the other colours that I had already put down. Now we're adding in a lot more definition to the cactus and adding in a really cool green because we want to think about that dusky tone where things are starting to get slightly darker and then intensify all of your other colours because your colours will slightly lighten as they dry. I then added a blue to where I wanted these darker tones. Now if you feel a bit scared about adding in a blue then you don't need to do this. 
You could add in further browns just to darken these areas. However, I do really enjoy using blue in my artwork instead of a black and I find that it works quite well for me. I was kind of thinking about complementary colours and my blues and my oranges, I thought they would work quite well with one another. And then once those blues were completely dry, I then started to stipple in further colours. Now I wanted to create a stipple with these rather than putting in a full swoop of paint because I want to get a lot of texture in this. I want to think about the ground being covered in some sort of grass and I needed the texture. I then decided to add a yellow to my cactus to make it look as though a little bit of the sun was reflecting and casting a really nice warm tone to the highlights of this and I think that it just worked really nicely against the grass in the foreground. And then I added quite a dark shadow with a purple again to reflect some of the colour that I'd used in the sky. To finish off my painting I'm actually going to add some Faber-Castell polychromos and I'm using a magenta along the edge of some of the cactus and then also adding in this orange just to show some of the highlights and the colours casting from the sky. I've then added in some browns and oranges just in a scumbling effect so tiny little scribbles to add to the texture of the ground. And then my absolute favourite part is to remove the tape to see that really nice crisp line and I just find this so satisfying. To make sure that you don't accidentally rip your work or your paper, always pull away from your painting and remove some of that stickiness before you actually apply it to your paper. So there you guys have it. I hope you have enjoyed this little video on the watercolour desert landscape. I really enjoy painting it and I hope you enjoy painting your desert scene too. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you enjoy this style of video so I know if you want any more like this I can then create them. If you have enjoyed the video make sure you give it a big thumbs up. It really does help out my channel and it will push the video out to a lot more people. If you haven't already subscribed make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.